Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from more grisly tales for gruesome kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called The Grass Monkey. The boy's name was Spike. Spike because he was born with a spike of hair in the middle of his head, like a clump of grass in a desert. He was a spindly runt of a child, thin gangly limbs, long feet and a big head with sticky out ears like a monkey's. He was ten years old and lived with his sick mother in a caravan on a piece of unwanted concrete underneath a flyover. They were very poor. Apart from the caravan, all they owned in the world was a bony cow called Ruby. They had bought her for milk, but since she had no grass to eat, her milk had dried up. I'm off to school, said Spike one morning, stamping hard on the flapping plaster that was wound around his shoe to keep the sole on. His mother was in bed. Her head lay on the pillow next to a rusty saucepan that was catching rainwater as it dripped through a hole in the roof. Have we got anything for tea? Take some money from my purse, whispered his mother. But the purse was empty. Oh, it's OK, he said, as angry tears of helplessness welled up in her eyes. I, I get paid tonight. I I'll buy something to eat on the way home. You're a good boy, she said, going out to work after school. Well, it's only a couple of hours, and three pounds is three pounds, smiled Spike. His mother's face was pale and worn. I'm sorry, she coughed. If I could wave a magic wand and make our life better, I would. But she couldn't. When Spike climbed out of the trailer and set off for school, he forgot to close the door behind him. It thumped against the aluminium panel and woke his mother from a fitful sleep. She raised a weary eye as a crouching shadow scuttled into the galley. Outside, Ruby mooed at the long brown tail as it slunk through the door and was snatched out of view by a claw. Spike worked for a lady's hairdresser. Every day after school he swept the cut hair off the floor and made cups of tea for the customers. On this particular day business was slack. The only customer was an eleven-year-old girl called Esmeralda, a self-obsessed madam with a loud mouth and big hair who came in seven days a week. She had a huge blonde mane that tumbled down her back to her knees. It was thick and glossy like the coat of an Afghan hound. It was that bouncy sort of hair you see toothy girls tossing this way and that in shampoo commercials. It was teased and tussled and scrunched and puffed into a mountain of artificiality that was held together with starch and glue. Esmeralda, you see, was entering the annual Miss Golden Locks competition down on the pier, a competition of the utmost import to all the fluffy-headed young ladies of the town. In addition to winning £50 and having her picture on the front page of the Evening Argos, the winner also booked her place on a float in the summer parade with dogs from the RSPCA hospital and won herself a chance to try out as a fashion model. Esmeralda had to win at all costs. Being a model had been her lifelong ambition ever since she was eight and a half. As a result, she spent £25 a day at the hairdresser, having scientific lotions and potions poured onto her crowning glory in order to lengthen and strengthen each individual strand of hair. Failure was not an option for Esmeralda. If she didn't win Miss Goldenlocks, she had vowed to shave her head and go and live in a nunnery. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it, 
she squealed as Spike swept the hair up from under her feet. Those horrible hairs are tickling my nose. Go away, monkey boy. I'm here to be made beautiful, and all you're doing is making me sneeze. Spike looked forlorn. Although he never expected a girl as ravishingly beautiful as Esmeralda to like him, he harboured a sneaky hope that she might. Sorry. He mumbled as she turned back to the mirror and wittered to the bored girl who was cutting her hair. Of course, Sandra, I don't think a man is a real man unless his body is covered in waves of thick, glossy hair. Sandra pulled a face. Not all over, yuck. And you a girl who works with hair? Esmeralda's shriek was as shrill as a referee's whistle. She was eleven years old but was trying to sound thirty. Oh, that's so darlingly funny! Then suddenly her laugh cut out. What are you doing? Sandra was pouring a dollop of pink cream into the palm of her hand. Well, I'm nourishing your follicles, she said defensively. With nout inside complex? Esmeralda checked nervously. Well, of course. An added gully girl gluten with Costa Bobotulin? Sandra nodded. "'Because I need my chemicals, Sandra. "'My hair has to be stronger and longer than anyone else's "'or I'll never be Miss Goldenlocks.' "'Tea,' smiled Spike, "'offering a mug to the girl of his dreams. "'One sugar, just the way you like it.' "'Oh, go away, you insensitive brute!' "'called the big-haired brat in the chair, "'knocking the hot tea over Spike's trousers. "'Can't you see I'm preening?' Spike stood very still, waiting for the hot liquid to soak into his thigh. But before the pain arrived, the door burst open and Esmeralda's parents screeched in. Their four-by-four four thrummed outside on a double yellow line while the Labradors barked in the boot. Fury! shouted her purple-faced father. And grave disappointment! added her frowning mother. These are the emotions that are currently troubling your father and me. Oh, go away, screeched their beehive daughter. But we have forbidden you to come in here every day. Not being a natural beauty yourself, mother, said Esmeralda shockingly, you wouldn't understand. Beauty has to be worked at and maintained. Like a boiler said Spike supportively. Esmeralda glowered. Sorry. But Goldilocks, simpered her mother, Mummy's only concern that all those chemicals will ruin your beautiful hair. What would happen if they turned it green? asked her father. Well, if the chemicals turn my hair green, I would dye it back again. There's nothing you can say to dissuade me. I will have the most beautiful hair in the world, and there's an end to it. But there was not an end to it, because for once her soft-as-a-brush parents would not be disobeyed. I'm sorry, Esmeralda, but prepare yourself for a cruel blow. Ah! Spike's sudden scream interrupted the mother's sentence like a fire alarm. The hot Tea had just reached his skin, and he jumped around the shop like a Morris dancer in a wasp's nest. You're coming home with us, Esmeralda knew when she was beaten. Your poos, she sulked, jumping out of the chair. And will my jailers allow me to tend to my burnt boyfriend before they drag me away? Boyfriend? Spike's eyeballs pinged out on red alert. Boyfriend? Were those angels he could hear? And why had his legs suddenly stopped hurting? Boyfriend, he gasped. Oh, shut up, hissed Esmeralda as she pushed the limply swooning Spike into a back room and whispered urgently into his ear. Look, I I'm sorry if everything I've ever said to you has made it sound like I hate you, she stated bluntly. But the truth is that I think you're very handsome and I fancy you nearly as much as I'm crazy about peanut butter. Spike pinched his own skinny arm to check he wasn't dreaming. Is this love? He asked. She took a moment to respond. Um, it might be, 
she schemed, offering just enough hope to keep Spike interested. He grinned foolishly. And might, might be, ever be, is... If you steal the chemical shampoo and bring it to my house, it might. But it must contain nout inside, gully girl gluten and costa boba toolin, or it won't do. Comprendo? Bring me that and I... Well, I might love you. And then she was gone, twirling out of his life in a whirlwind of curls like a cunning blonde widow spider. Spike was caught on the horns of a dilemma. Stealing was wrong. But if it meant that Esmeralda might love him, surely it was worth being just a tiny bit bad. It wasn't really a dilemma. He waited till Sandra had gone out the back to freshen up for the bus ride home before sweeping half a dozen shampoos into a carrier bag and covering them with hair cuttings to avoid discovery. When he got home, he was all a-tingle with passionate anticipation. He took a shower underneath the overspill pipe that drained water off the flyover and dried himself on a sheet of newspaper. When he was dressed again, he took out the stolen shampoo and admired it, just as other suitors might admire a diamond ring or a Fabergé necklace. As he laid the bottle back down on the hair cuttings, however, he suddenly remembered what his beloved Esmeralda had said to Sandra about real men and body hair. So he rushed down the road to a builder's skip, retrieved a pot of lumpy wallpaper paste, painted himself all over, and stuck on the loose hair from the plastic bag. In less than half an hour, Spike was a hairy man, just what Esmeralda liked. Spike? Spike clamped his shirt across his chest so that his mother wouldn't see the hair. Mum... He said, what are you doing out of bed? She was standing in the doorway to the caravan. After you left this morning, she said, I had a visitor. Her voice was bubbling. There was a twinkle in her eye. He was a hobgoblin. Well, so he said, a little monkey man all covered in hair with a big bony head. Apparently he heard me wish for a wish this morning and came in to grant it. Spike was having difficulty keeping up. Well, how do you know he was a hobgoblin? Well, he he showed me his card, like the gas man used to. It said, Geraldo the lawn grower, hobgoblin and hex horticulturist. He gave us this. She held out a hessian sack with the top folded back. Inside there was grass seed. It's magic. She giggled. He told me to plant one seed in the window box every night, water it, and wait till the morning, when it will have grown into a huge blade of grass. Is that good? asked Spike. Good? laughed his mother. Ruby can eat the grass and produce milk, and milk we can sell. It's a miracle. Spike was pleased that his mother was pleased. He gave her a hug. I'll I'll be back before dark, he said, as she untangled her arms and bent down to plant the first seed. There is one thing you should know, she added matter-of-factly. We must only ever plant one seed at a time. Planting more is highly dangerous and should be avoided. Spike nodded absent-mindedly and turned to go, but his mother's voice stopped him. Spike? She was standing now with a puzzled look on her face. Haven't you grown up quickly, she said. Time was when you didn't have one hair on your body, but now, gosh, it's a forest. Spike blushed, picked up the stolen shampoo and ran off down the road, his hairy chest rustling under his shirt like a family of ferrets scampering through bracken. But when Esmeralda saw Spike in all his hairiness, she screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed. Her face turned bright purple and she started to pant. She thought he was a monkey in boys' clothes. And monkeys were bad news for people with big hair because monkeys like to rummage through hair looking for lice. 
Spike had to pull all the hair off in front of her to prove it wasn't real. It's me, Spike, he cried. I was only trying to be sexy. But Spike, trying to be sexy, had reduced Esmeralda to a neurotic jelly. Her parents found her quivering on the floor when they burst into the room. <laughs> Screaming, shouted her father. That's what I heard. Spike had crawled under the bed and was holding his breath. And here, screeched her mother, on the floor. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, but there were long head rats in here, lied Esmeralda. That's why I screamed. And when they heard you coming in, they were so scared that they jumped out of their skins. That's the hair. Well, you're weird, stated her father clinically. Those shampoo chemicals are scrambling your brain, Esmeralda. There it is. I've said it. And with that, he was gone. I do wish you'd listen to your father, whispered Esmeralda's mother. He's a wise man. He reads a book every year. And if he says the chemicals are bad for you, well, they must be. And with that, she was gone allowing Spike to crawl out from under the bed and grin sheepishly. Sorry, he winced. I, I thought the hairy chest would be acceptable. You clumsy oaf, she blubbed. My gorgeous hair was that close to losing volume. If I'd lapsed into hysteria, I might have pulled it out by the handful. Spike really was sorry and handed over the bag of stolen shampoo by way of a peace offering. But all that did was rekindle her fury. Fresh tears bubbled up from her boots. And they're not all here, she wailed. You've forgotten the shampoo with nout inside. Poor Spike. His first date was going down the toilet. Well, I did my best he said softly. I stole what I could. And it wasn't good enough, seized the brat with the bouffon. If I don't win Miss Goldenlocks, you will be to blame. Oh, do you not love me then? he asked. She fixed him with a cold and cruel stare. Well, you obviously don't love me, or you'd have got me what I asked for. Steal me the shampoo with nout inside and I'll let you know. And that was as much encouragement as Spike was going to get. <coughs> he woke up the following morning feeling awful. Not only was he a thief, but he had let down Esmeralda as well. He wanted to go back to sleep, but his mother wouldn't let him. Oh, come and see, she trilled. The magic grass seed has grown. Ruby's eating. And true enough, when Spike went outside and squinted into the sunshine, there was the cow, chewing a huge blade of lush green grass from the window box. Spike was crushed in his mother's arms. Oh, Spike, I'm so happy, she beamed. Our troubles are over. It is a sad fact that when one says positively, our troubles are over, they never actually are. When Spike turned up for work after school, Sandra met him in the doorway. Don't bother coming in here, she said coldly. I thought I could trust you, Spike. I thought you needed the work to look after your poor mother, but obviously I was wrong. Thieves are not welcome in my shop. You're fired. Then the door was slammed in his face. Spike wondered what he should do. He decided to be honest. With a heavy heart, he trudged round to Esmeralda's house. Oh, I'm sorry, he said. I tried, but I couldn't get that shampoo with nout inside. Then, then how am I going to win Miss Goldenlocks? She screamed, kicking Spike hard in the knee. I need my chemicals. I must have big hair. I must have the longest, thickest hair in the whole wide world. Wait here, said Spike, as a cunning grin spread across his face. He just had the sort of idea that Einstein must have had when people called him a genius. 
Spike rushed home to find his mother sitting on two upended bricks in the sunshine. She was milking Ruby and singing while she pulled on the udders. Oh, look, Spike, she cried, our first milk in a month. Isn't it a beautiful day? But Spike was in too much of a hurry to reply. He dashed inside the caravan, snatched up the sack of magic grass seed, and was gone. You must eat it he explained to a sceptical Esmeralda, who was sniffing the seed sack suspiciously. Then drink a couple of pints of water and wait for the seeds to grow. This is a joke, isn't it? But it's magic, said Spike. It worked for a cow, why shouldn't it work for you? He could have put that better. It, it's magic, Esmeralda, trust me. If you want the longest, thickest hair in the world, eat one. But my hair will be green. So dye it, said Spike. That's what you told your parents you'd do. Oh, all right, she squealed gleefully, scooping a handful of seeds out of the sack. Oh, oh careful, warned Spike. You must only take one. Eating more is highly dangerous and should be avoided. Oh, nonsense, said Esmeralda. The more seeds I eat, the more luscious my locks will be. About the hobgoblins said, Oh, you don't believe in hobgoblins, do you? She scoffed. Grow up, Spike. And with that, she picked up the whole sack and poured every last grass seed down her throat. Do you love me now? asked Spike. Ask me again in the morning, she replied cagily, when we see if it's worked. When Spike got home, Ruby looked miserable, and his mother had gone back to bed. Oh, Spike, she cried as he came through the door. A most terrible thing has happened. Spike tried not to show that he knew. The magic grass seed has been stolen. What are we going to do? Well, we'll look for it in the morning, he said, avoiding eye contact with his mother. Oh, I, I wonder who could have done it but she did not reply. She was sobbing. Spike climbed into bed with a fist of guilt, lodged firmly in the pit of his stomach. The next morning, Spike was woken by a furious knocking on the door. He opened it to find Esmeralda standing outside, jabbering with excitement. On top of her head was a shock of startling green grass that circled her ears like a huge halo, plunged to the ground and fluttered behind her like a wedding veil. Who is it? croaked Spike's mother, half waking in her bed. Um, no one, said Spike, scared lest his mother should guess where the grass seed had gone. He pushed Esmeralda away from the door and jumped outside to join her. I'm going to win Miss Goldenlocks, she crowed ecstatically. When I finish with the peroxide, I shall have the most beautiful blonde hair in the world. The other girls will be so jealous. They'll be crying all over the place. But that won't bother me, because I'll have won, and they'll just be pathetic nothings with floor mops for hair. Spike was going to ask Esmeralda if she loved him now, but the words were snatched off his tongue by the freaky sight of her arms and legs. Oh, hairy hobgoblins, he gasped. Look what's happening! She looked down and squeaked. The grass was still growing. Tiny green shoots were wriggling out of her skin like peppermint worms. They were sprouting all over her body. Help! she whimpered. But Spike had no cure for magic. The grass grew on, covering her face like a lost golf ball in the rough, swamping her body, flowing out across the yard like a deep green river. And when it reached Ruby, she did what any hungry cow would do. She ate it. She gobbled up the grass and the ghastly girl inside it, faster than it takes a startled boy to cry out, Whoops! Spike didn't move for several seconds. When he did, he laughed with relief. 
Now that the grass seed was where it was meant to be all along, inside the cow, he didn't feel quite so bad about stealing it. Besides, Esmeralda was not really his type of girl. She was a bit grassy for him. Ruby mood, causing Spike to look round for the second shock in as many minutes. Because the magic seeds were inside Esmeralda, and Esmeralda was now inside the cow, the cow had also grown a lawn. Ruby's two stomachs rumbled appreciatively. She was in seventh heaven. Her skin was covered in thick green grass, and although she never produced another drop of milk, she did become the most famous freak cow in the world. Roll up! Roll up! Forget your boring moo cows, see the one and only Mo Cow, the only known herbivore who can eat herself. Spike and his mother travelled with Ruby from country to country, attracting crowds wherever they went. Small children played football on Ruby's back, and several Hollywood directors used her to advertise butter. Which meant, of course, that Spike and his mother never had to worry about money again.